Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lloyd Goggles. I'm the chairman of the Northern Apple Business Council, and I wanted to address uh, some items that I thought were uh, pertinent to the people of our community. I would first like to inform you all of um, um, the Tribal Reentry Court. That was a process that um, I, I and I, I believe the co-chair was invited to about, um, and there was a proposal uh, due to the hardships that uh, that uh, the current convicts uh, getting out of prison who were at a, a disadvantage in uh, different areas of their life and as well as melding back into the community. So the tribal reentry court, it will assist the tribal members for reentering a society. And this would be along with uh, uh, um, current um, standing the judges, um, Judge uh, Scabdahl, um, who, was, who was the other judge? Let's see. There was a panel of three, three justices. Yeah. Um, uh, the creation of this court has been a collaborative process amongst the tribe, White Buffalo Program, and the federal courts and the law enforcement agencies. Uh, the court is scheduled to begin operation at the end of October and will be operating out of the Metal Art Building. Uh, it will have a small caseload of five individuals that we you know, hope to, uh, well, we will you know, get a larger number, um, but that's all we'll be able to do. Uh, the Northern Rapport Tribe is applying for the Bureau of uh, Justice Assistance Recovery Grant uh, with uh, the grant funding, uh, the tribe will provide clinical and recovery support services that support treatment, suicide prevention, and the continuity of recovery in the community with the people for mental health, uh, substance abuse uh, disorders, or anything else upon their release. This uh, program will establish and expand system approaches that improve outcomes for adults with uh, you know, with the above mentioned the substance abuse uh, disorders and hopefully reunify their, um, them with their families and children and help uh, make them a successful community member. Mr. Spinner. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it is good to see our people um, today and have been able to talk with you all today. It's always an honor and a privilege to serve you all uh, with the Northern Rapid Business Council and the tribe. I just kind of wanted to highlight some of the work that we've been doing on the national committees and um, participating in various hearings uh, that impact not only the Northern Rapid Tribe, but also Indian Country, uh, state of Wyoming. And so uh, we were able to, uh, we were invited to sit on the uh, child support enforcement um, led consultation and uh, the spring with the commissioner that's appointed by the president and we were able to hear the programs on very important child support issues as our madam co-chair and i our former child support directors is very important near and dear to our heart to make sure that we are providing the best services for our children also uh just to highlight some of the things that we've been doing on the national level again these seats that we sit on are not no, not only the Northern Rapid Business Council, the Northern Rapid Tribe, uh, they are also um, the Rocky Mountain region, Billings area. And so we we uh, represent a number of, of tribes and regions on, on various boards. Councilman Teresa Hischase was able to provide written comment and testimony on the ANA Language Durban Feeling uh, Language Act and was also able to speak uh, verb and provide verbal testimony at the National Congress of American Indians on uh, language revitaliz revitalization. And also, um, I was able to provide testimony at National Congress of American Indians on HHS Administration for Children and Families uh, programs and funding levels that impact a lot of our children and families, a lot of the federal funding that we um, so rely on to operate the services that we provide to all of you, our, our people, our children and families. Um, 
Teresa was also asked to be on the Murdered, Missing, and Indigenous Peoples Task Force with the state of Wyoming and also with the Whitaker Casino Community Gathering in May. Um, Keenan, uh, Councilman Keenan Grosbeck was able to testify for the American Church and in Washington, D.C. in the House of Corporation Subcommittee on Interior, Environment, and Related Agencies on the Need to Protect Sacred Medicines. Uh, Karen, um, to Madam Co-Chair, Karen Returns to War also testified on the importance of Indian Child Welfare Act as we know what before the Supreme Court. She was on a round table with the House Natural Resources Committee and uh, I was able to uh, testify on behalf of National Indian Health Board which I am the Rocky Mountain Region uh, Delegate for um, National Indian Health Board in this area. Uh, I was able to testify for the House Indian Affairs and Insular um, Affairs Committee on the IHS Accountability Act, which has uh, already passed the Senate and is waiting for the House version uh, for, for IHS funding. Uh, uh, just a few of the, um, one of our staff, uh, Tola Womble, one of our engineers, she was able to testify in the United States Senate Subcommittee on behalf of the tribe for the need for increased funding on to support water infrastructure and uh, we I want to talk about just a few of the uh, national committees and, and boards that I sit on not only for myself but on behalf of another upper tribe and on behalf of our regions and Indian country uh, I sit on um, the HHS secretary Javier Becerra's tribal advisory committee I am the primary delegate for the board of directors for the National Indian Gaming Association um, I sit on the U.S. HUD Secretary Marcia Fudge's uh, Tribal Advisory Committee, uh, also in the Administration for Children and Families Advisory Committee, and also the Health and Resources Services Administration HRSA Tribal Advisor, Advisory Committee. We work with our federal delegation very closely, uh, Senator Barrasso, Senator Lummis, and also Representative Hagman. We have uh, very good working relationships with our Wyoming delegation, although we may not always agree on issues in, and um, different um, opinions, but we come together for, on behalf of the Northern Apple Tribe and also our uh, state of Wyoming. So uh, I just want to thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, for that uh, time to talk today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman. In a dose, we see it need to aim at Nananana not Carsini Bay, near the Chana Tahenta Tana Thena. Hello, everyone. My name is Councilwoman His Chase. My Arapaho name is Singing Sage. I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to see all of you, our Arapaho people. I'm happy to be here today to share with you some of the wonderful accomplishments that we've accomplished since being elected in. Um, Education is near and dear to our heart. It, it It's with all of us on the council. It's not just one person or a few of us. It's every single one of us are all 100% in support of education. And we started, we established an endowment with the University of Colorado, Denver. The endowment is for college students from the Arapaho tribe to now have access to an endowed scholarship from the University of Colorado, Denver. This is something that's near and dear to our hearts because we know that Colorado is our ancestral homeland and it's helping us bring our people back to the state of Colorado to be educated in our homelands and downtown Denver was also part of our homelands and this, this will enable our tribal members an opportunity for scholarship and as well as learning and retracing our ancestor steps as they go through college. And we're, so we're really excited about that, how we Established this scholarship was through a $25,000 donation to the Northern, from the Northern Arapaho Tribe. And then the University of Colorado matched us $25,000. And so the beginning of the endowment will be $50,000. And we're going to, of course, increase it in years to come so that more tribal members can attend school down there. We're also looking at other places such as the Colorado Schools of Mine, Colorado School of Mines to do the same type of endowment so that we can send people down there who, who are interested in becoming petroleum engineers, geologists, physicists, um, and business people, which is also something that we need in our 
uh, economic for economic development and expansion on our reservation. That's really important, and um, education is the key to our future. And so we're going to work with the colleges that we're working with already to recruit so that more of our tribal members can go go home to get their education down in Colorado. Um, as far as education and language revitalization, when we first got in office, then we began a weekly language um, course for, for our staff, for all tribal programs, Marlin Spoon Hunter, administers the Zoom classes. It's held once a week on Thursdays at 11 o'clock. Community members are encouraged and invited to attend. If you need more information, feel free to reach out to Marlon Spoonhunter and he's um, available at the Tribal College Monday through Friday. Um, the classes are ongoing and like I said, they're open to the community. Uh, I wrote a grant to the BIA LLGP Living Language Grant Program through the OIED, and that grant was for a maximum amount of 300000 per year for three years. And I wrote the grant for the um, Language and Culture Commission and the Tribal College so they could work together with all of our local schools and we can develop one common curriculum and develop textbooks for um, K through 12 um, level across the reservation. And at the same time, we want to design language language family immersion nests for all ages on, at different locations on a reservation so families can come and learn together. And so that reinforcement will be back in the homes again like it once was. And so we're hoping to hear, if, you know, if we receive that funding by the end of this month. As far as education in our local public schools at the Tribal Select Committee in July, it was brought brought up about the low test scores on the reservation. And so now we're working with our tribal liaison, who is Anita Roman, and um, all of our superintendents um, to figure this out, to figure this out. And what I stated at the in July's meeting was that our children are not mm -hmm. tested right. I think they need to be tested according to our culture, according to things that are um, important to them. And they should be culturally sensitive and the results of this kind of idea are already there. When we had an after-school program at one of the local schools on the reservation, then we, our, our students were, had Arapaho language and culture incorporated into every single activity that they were doing. The results of that um, action was increased test scores the following year. Arapaho Scholars is what we were creating. And we want the same thing at all of our local schools. So we think that by the state of Wyoming realizing that our students need to be tested accordingly, then I think that's going to make a dramatic impact. And we're still waiting to hear from school superintendents to see what efforts they're making in order to increase student test scores according to the state standardized tests. It is already known, it's, it's already a known fact that when a student is brought up with their language and culture in their lives, then they far surpass all of their English counterparts on all standardized tests. And that's what we want. That's what we want as a council. That's what we want as a tribe. And that's what we want, our, uh, that's what we want for our future. The buffalo hunt, we had um, the business council supported the veterans buffalo hunt last fall. Um, Devin Oldman is our um, buffalo hunt coordinator for the tribe. He took the veterans up and they harvested eight buffalo. The, the hunt provided for meat for our elders and our community members. And there was a community gathering at Blue Sky Hall on Father's Day. And I, I attended and I helped the community members butcher seven buffalo. The... Buffalo meat then went to our ceremonial elders for our cer summer ceremony, as well as all of our elders. Um, we distributed we distributed the meat through both of our local senior citizen centers. So, special thanks to Devin. Special thanks to our veterans. Special thanks to um, Sherry Blackburn in helping all of this come into play and make it a reality. Because we know that food sovereignty is is big. We know that we need to do things like this for our people and please expect more of it in the coming years. Mm -hmm.
don't know what else to talk about. Save some for everybody else. Madam <laughs> <laughs> Butcher. Das passiert nicht in Nase nach dem Gesicht. Ich sagte, hallo, everyone, my relatives, uh, my rapper name is Sitting Woman. I would like to um, talk about some of the things that I have been involved in, the Indian Child Welfare Act. I was able to testify in a testify regarding the ICWA, and I also was placed on the task force. We are currently meeting monthly, and we are looking at the ICWA, um, the way it looks in the state of Wyoming, and we're trying to build upon that and make it even better for Indian children. So I'm really glad to be involved in that. A lot of you that may know that personally, I have two other nieces that are out here we haven't found yet, so this is something that's dear to my heart. And so I am very honored to be placed in that position to help other children. Also, I've also been involved with the tribal map funding, as Councilman Spoonhunter has said. This has been an issue with um, child support for years. And when I had come on board, it was still an issue. And we were, along with other directors throughout Indian country, we have worked really hard to bring this to the attention of all the people up out in DC. And this year, we finally were able to reach the people that needed to be heard. And so with that being said, we are just waiting for that to be enacted where not only child support, but Head Start is also going to be, um, the tribal match for those programs are going to be eliminated. I would also like to um, comment on the tribal reentry portion. This is something that is entirely needed for our federal offenders as they come in. They come back in with basically nothing and are expected, have high expectations, stipulations put on them. They have to come back in and have jobs. They have to find housing. They have to be able to do a lot of attend classes. There's a lot of things that they have to come back into um, when a lot of people don't understand that when you are a federal offender and you are put in those prisons, your entire life has changed. You have no rights. You have to be told what to do, when to do it. And then so a lot of our people have a hard time coming back in and reintegrating into society. And so currently we don't have a lot of resources to help our people. And so I'm excited to be a part of that also. That's all, thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilman. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the things that I want to talk about today are the um, the aquifer that the tribes are, are facing, not only our tribe, but nearby surrounding communities. Um, back in, so a developer at the Minita Divide Gas and Aqua wants to inject millions of gallons a day of polluted water into the Madison Aquifer east of Riverton. This is one of the most valuable portable aquifers that we have in the state. Atheon Energy is a private Dallas-based firm. Um, they are seeking an injection permit and aquifer exemption. They want to pump up 1.2 million gallons a day of polluted water 15,000 feet underground into the Madison Formation. The Madison Formation um, is quite large. It's one of the purest aquifers that we have in this area. Should this happen, the our people, our generations to come, would be faced with polluted water, with water that's not being able to drink. Um, if we try to make any kind of water development out of it, it would cost millions of dollars for that to happen in the communities. So this is something that the council has been working on. We've been paying attention to it. So. I went to the EPA and attended those meetings. Another thing that is concerned for us is the um, carbon capture that is coming out. Um, we don't really know a lot about it at this time, but we're working really hard to find out how the tribes can benefit and get on board since this is a statewide effort through the governor's office. 
um, another thing that it was a part of, that everyone is a part of is a buffalo hunt. Uh, we received 27 buffaloes back in May. We brought those home. Um, I think believe we have 76 cows now, cows and bulls, and I believe we have four new um, calves this year. Um, one of the things that we did was we met with the OST uh, tribe out of um, South Dakota. They want to enter into partnership with the Northern Rapo tribe in exchanging buffalo meat for elk meat. So that's something that we're looking forward to and looking forward to helping our allies. Um, another thing we've been working on is our treaties. Our former lawyer really start digging into looking at our treaties, looking at our rights, because a lot of these we'll be using in courts and we have been. Um, we're starting to find out that we may, we may be part of not only the treaties that we know of, but we may be part of seven treaties. And that extends clear into Kansas. So we're learning a lot about our tribe, which we didn't know before. So there's a lot of um, good things that is going on. We've been working hard, um, looking forward, trying to be really proactive and not reactive to the things that are coming at us. That's all I have to say for now. Um, I'd really like to go into depth on the um, Marlin Aquifer for more of you to know um, at our informational that will be posted soon. Thank you. Uh -huh. Councilman. Good afternoon, uh, Northern Rapport people. This is uh, Councilman Keenan Grosbeck. Uh, just to uh, like to uh, talk a little bit today on some of the uh, work I've been doing for the Northern Rapport people. And some of it is, uh, I've been, uh, I'm working with the uh, Wonder River Intertribal Council as uh, uh, on, on the uh, Land Resource Committee, taking care of our, uh, our land issues that we have that, that have been coming up with, uh, along with uh, looking into uh, encroachment from the state of Wyoming on our, on our borders, <coughs> on the reservation. I've also been, uh, I'm also part of the Transportation Committee for Intertribal Council and uh, making sure that we have uh, safe roads and uh, highways for the uh, for our community, you know. Not only our community, but for uh, the whole community on the reservation, not just for uh, Arapahoes or Shoshones, but everybody that stays out there on the reservation. That's including non-natives also too, you know. And we got a lot, of <clears throat> a lot of good things coming up, a lot of projects that will be coming up in the future. <clears throat> to improve the, the roadways and the infrastructure systems, roadway systems that we have on the reservation. And a lot of work I've been putting into, um, a lot of work I've been doing also has been with the Solid Waste Committee. I've been working with uh, the Eastern Shoshone and along with um, Dean Goggles, uh, Otis McCabe, on trying to get our 70-mile uh, transfer station, our waste station open, so we could uh, provide a service for our people, because uh, we all know that um, uh, the illegal dumping that's going on on the reservation, you know, and we're trying to, myself and the council is trying to be proactive and trying to get this uh, transfer station open so we could address those problems. And we also need to address the problem as uh, our tribal membership needs to um, also do their part, you know, on helping clean up our reservation. It's not just uh, the tribal tribal uh, leaders' uh, obligation, but it's uh, everybody's obligation to the younger generations to make sure that they have a, a clean and healthy reservation when we're when we're gone. So I've been working with that quite a bit also, and trying to get that transfer station open. And we're in negotiations right now with the uh, state and. Uh, the uh, county as we speak now and you will be hearing more from me in the future <clears throat> and that'd be it thank you